Hi, friends of tracking. I am Luca Papalardo from the National Research Council of Italy. And in this video, we are going to explore with Python a public dataset of soccer match events. Let's start. First of all, you find all the material of this tutorial in these two repositories on GitHub. And you can freely download the public dataset in this Figshare repository. You find a complete description of the public dataset in this data paper here. Please cite this data paper if you use the public dataset or the material in this tutorial for your analysis or research. You need to import some auxiliary Python files in which we put some useful functions that will be used during this tutorial. You can then automatically download the public dataset from the Figshare repository using this data download function. This function uses Figshare APIs to download all the files in the public dataset and put them into a data folder. This other function here, load public dataset, takes all these files and creates some useful dictionaries. The most important ones are the match ID to match and the match ID to events dictionaries. Match ID to match is a dictionary of match identifiers to matches. Each match is another dictionary describing the match. Match ID to events is a dictionary of match identifiers to a list of events. Each event is another dictionary describing this specific event. As you may see here, the dataset stores information about seven prominent soccer competitions, one entire season of the Italian, English, Spanish, French and German first division, as well as the last Euro Cup and the last World Cup. In this tutorial, we are going to analyze one entire season of the, Italian, of the Italian first division only to speed up computation, but you may easily modify the functions in this tutorial to make them analyze all the competitions together. But how are these data collected? Well, the process of tagging the soccer events is a manual process made by the help of a software called the tagger. For example, this is a screenshot from the tagger of company Wisecout. A human operator can visualize in the tagger a video of a soccer match, as well as a timeline of this video. When there is a significant or relevant event during the match, the operator can stop the timeline and uh, specify who is the player or the players associated to this event and some other meta information like the type of event or the position of the field where this event occurs and, for example, like in this case, if it is a shot, also where the shot ends. Consider that this procedure is made uh, basically for every match of the most important soccer competitions in the world. Let's now explore the structure of the data starting from the player ID to player dictionary. For example, let's take just the first player in our dictionary and print related information. As you may see, we have a lot of information about this player. First of all, uh, an identifier of that player within the Scout system, the passport year information and the birth area information. Then we have the weight of the player, the height of the player, the first name, the middle name, and the last name, and a short name of the player, which is generally the name put on the jersey of the player. Then we also have information about the current team identifier, the birth date, the role of the player, in this case, for example, the player is a goalkeeper, and we have information about even the preferred foot of the player, the right foot on, in this case, and if the player currently plays for his national team, the identifier of the national team. We may do a lot of interesting analysis on this data. For example, here we take 
uh, all the heights of the players and plot a histogram of these heights. As me, we may see in this plot, on average, the height of the players is 185 cm and the two extremes are 2 meters on the right and 165 cm on the left. Similarly, we may explore the structure of the competition dictionary and in this case we see that we have again the identifier of the competition within the Scout system, the name of the competition, the format, domestic league in this case, and some information about the geographic area the competition refers to, in this case Italy. Uh, the matches dictionary is more complex than the other ones. Let's take, for example, the just the first match in our dictionary and print the related information. In the match dictionary, we have some useful information per each team, and in particular, we have the formation of that team. That is, the list of players in the bench, the list of players in the uh, lineup. Of the team and finally all the substitutions during the match. We also have some other useful information uh, for, for both teams like the date of the match, the identifier of the team that won the match uh, and also the label of the match, in this case Lazio Internazionale. Finally we have also the identifier of the referees of this match. We may do a lot of interesting analysis uh, using the match dictionary. For example, in this case, let's take let's use the label uh, field of the dictionary to compute the number of goals within an entire season. We do that by iterating over all the matches in the match ID to match uh, dictionary, taking the labels and then just taking these substrings here indicating the number of goals of the home team and the away team. What we discovered in particular is that in the Italian first division we had in that season almost 1000 goals. Or we may compute uh, the average number of goals per match. In this case we compute the total number of goals and divide by the number of matches and we discovered that in that season uh, of the Italian First Division, we had 2.68 goals per match. Let's go now to the most important object in our dataset, the event. Let's take, for example, just the first event from the list of events of a specific match, and we see that we have a lot of interesting information. First of all, the type of the event, as indicated by the event name field, a pass in this case, and the subtype of the event, as indicated by the sub-event name field, a simple pass in this case. For each event, we also have the position of the field where the event was originated. For a pass, we have both the origin location and the destination location on the field. We have also several tags for each event. 1801, for instance, indicates that the pass is accurate, in other words, that the pass successfully reached the destination player. We then have the identifier of the player associated with that event, the match identifier, the team identifier, and some time information like the event set field indicating when that event was originated with respect to the current half of the match. But how many different combinations of event types and subtypes do we have in the dataset? We can discover it simply by iterating over all the events in our dataset. And what we discover is that the macro types of events are duels, falls, free kicks, goalkeeper leaving line, interruption, offside, others on the ball, passes, save attempts, and shots. And for each event type, we have several subtypes. For instance, for duels we have air duels, ground attacking duels, ground defending duels, ground loose ball duels. For falls we have hand falls, late called falls, auto games falls, and so on and so forth. Please refer to uh, Scout documentation for further information about events and sub-events. 
But what is the frequency of each event type in our dataset? Well, if we make just a very simple uh, bar chart, we discover that, not surprisingly, passes are by far the most frequent events in soccer, accounting for almost 50% of all the events in our matches, followed by duels, around 25% of all the events, adds on the balls, free kicks, interruptions, shots are around 1 or 2% of all the events, and then all the other ones. If we then plot the distribution of how many events we have in each match, then we discover that, on average, each match has 1,700 uh, uh, events, uh, with a maximum of 2,000 events and a minimum of 1,300 events per match. The first thing that I generally do when I want to analyze a match is to plot all the events of that match on the position of the field where they have occurred. Let's take, for example, just one match in our dataset and the list of all the events in that match. With this code here, we can finally plot all the events on the position where they have occurred. Here, uh, red dots indicate an event by Internazionale, blue squares indicate event by Lazio. We can notice that actually Internazionale has much more events than Lazio and the event, that the events are concentrated in the, in the central part of the field. We also provide you a function you can play with where you can specify another match uh, if you want the data of both teams or just one of the teams and the kind of event you want to plot. For example, here we plot just the events by Internazionale, here the events by Lazio, and here the event of both teams again. Or you may also specify one, um, a specific type. In this case, we have the false by Internazionale only, the false by Lazio only, and again, we have the false by both teams. We also created an interactive version of this plot uh, with which you can visualize all the events of the two teams, but passing through a particular event, you get useful information about that event, such as the player name and the player ID and the coordinates of the position of that particular event. You may also exclude one of the teams by clicking on the team name here on the legend on the right. Similarly to the static plot, you may get information for a specific event type, false in this case, and for a specific player. This plot, for example, visualizes all defaults by Vecino in that match. Vecino is an international player. Another interesting aspect to investigate is the spatial distribution on the soccer field of the events of a specific type. In this function, for each event type, we take the position of all the events and perform a kennel density estimation. We discover that duels are mainly concentrated on the side of the field and so are false. We also see here that faults in a team's own uh, area are pretty rare because they would lead to a penalty. Offsides, not surprisingly, are concentrated towards the opponent's goal and so are shots. The spatial distribution of shots is particularly important if you want to train an expected goals model or a similar models. We may also analyze within a match the, the evolution of the number of events in time, and we discover that for goals there is not a clear trend. Well, goals are more likely to be scored between minutes uh, 25, 20 to 35, more or less, but you know, there is not a clear increase in trend during the game. In contrast, if we analyze yellow cards and red cards, we discover that there is a trend. For example, for, ye for, for yellow cards, uh, they become increasingly more likely as the match goes by. And for red cards, we discover that uh, they happen mainly at the very beginning of the match or at the very end of the match. The richness and the multidimensionality of the dataset allows us to compute some advanced statistics. For example, 
passing networks are among the most common models in soccer analytics to um, capture the interaction between players on the field. Note that in voice scout data, uh, we only know the player who originates the event, but we don't know the destination player. This information must be inferred from the data. A possible way to do that is to sort, sort all the events uh, by time and then to look at the tags. If a pass is accurate, then we can assume that the next player is a teammate and hence that the next player is the destination of, of the pass. In this example, we take a match ID and compute the passing networks for the two teams in this match and we then visualize the two networks by using NetworkX, which is a common uh, Python library for network analysis. In this visualization here, nodes represent players and directed edges between nodes represent passes. The flow centrality is one of the many measures that we may compute on a passing network. In particular, the flow centrality captures the fraction of times that a player is in those paths that result in a shot. It uh, is a measure of the performance, of the quality of a performance of a player in a match. Uh, where for performance we mean the centrality of the player within his team. Numerically, the flow centrality of a player in a passing network can be easily computed by using NetworkX Python package and in particular the flow between a centrality measure. Flow between a, between a centrality is one of the many centrality measures that you may compute on a passing network. This function here, get flow centrality, computes the flow centrality for each player and for each match, so it takes some time. I already uh, computed it for you. And then we take three Italian players, Chiellini, Immobile, and Barella, and by this function plot flow centrality, we can compare the distribution of the flow centrality of these three players in the entire season. We discovered that while Immobile and Chiellini have pretty peak the distribution, Barella, Barella's flow centrality uh, has a much higher variance during the season. <music>